very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very honoured to be invited here today by His Excellency Omar Sultan Al Olama to visit Dubai and actually share the stories about how we, a company called Tencent and China, has actually embraced artificial intelligence over the past 10 years or so. Now, it is actually very fascinating to see this amazing city, the city of Dubai. I've came here three or four times in the past. The city of Dubai has embraced the potential and possibilities of artificial intelligence for both the United Arab Emirates and China are actually really pushing the boundaries and the envelopes of artificial intelligence the way we know it. From examples such as enhancing the transport schemes and innovating healthcare to expanding educational opportunities, these two countries are actually utilizing AI to address issues touching people's daily lives. Our mutual purpose, very simply, to dramatically improve the qualities of our people's lifestyles. Now, this concern is actually nothing new. The thing about harnessing the technology for the enrichment of people's lives. In September of the year 2015, at a United Nations summit, the 2030 Agenda for Global Sustainable Development was unanimously adopted by many leaders around the free world. And in that meeting, a 17 goals for global sustainable development was agreed upon. Now, the questions of how sustainable development enhances people's life is actually crucial and in determining the development and even the survival of future society. Governments, organizations, and individuals around the world have pondered over such significant questions since reaching a consensus on what do we mean by sustainable development. So when Tencent, a technology company, when we we, we are, by the way, just 20 years in a being. We were, we were launched way back in 1998. So when we scrutinize our experiences over the past two decades, what we have learned, and we found clear evidence that technology indeed would play a very significant role in the realizations of sustainable development in a society. In particular, today, we talk about AIs, this is an untapped potential that will lead us into a future of imaginations and hope. Now, one complication, however, that we cannot ignore is simply this. While AI creates a host of opportunities, space of imaginations, etc., for sustainable development, but it also potentially poses philosophical ethical and practical challenges. We, as human beings, we are unleashing a type of technology so dynamic, so unknown, and even unpredictable, potentially, that unintended consequences might follow. As the great, good Stephen Hawking would have put it, the rise of powerful AI will be either for the best or the worst thing ever to happen to humanity. And today, we do not yet know which. So to, to minimize any of AI's potential adverse ramifications while on the path to further sustainable development, I think we need not seek out a neutral ground, if you like, a neutral technology but instead believe in technology for good and what my team and I would call responsible AI. You know, during one of the recent meetings that we had in UNESCO, um, it, it is also an AI summit, I remarked 
that while the tides of technological optimism eventually will ebb, we should be aware that when accessing AI's contribution to realizing the goal of sustainable development, the pivotal word in artificial intelligence is not about intelligence, but artificial. And what I mean here is that the key component of responsible AI is human reflections and intervention. Our objective is simply to guarantee the overall advancements of humanity, not just technological innovation for technology's sake. Well, AI potentially could be a very powerful tool and ally. It must be directed by human responsibility and human touch, and only then will AI reach its full potential for driving sustainability. Now, here are a list of some of the case studies we have experienced, how Tencent has managed to learn and implement responsible AI to promote better lives for our people. Now, based on years of practice, we focus on employing these concepts on a product level, on a country's level, and a planetary scales level. Now, compared with previous types of technological revolutions, the information gap due to digitalization, AI in particular, may further divide human society deepening imperity and presenting a huge challenge for the society. This is simply something that is unthinkable and unacceptable. And as our product, because products such as WeChat and etc. are actually reaching hundreds of millions of users everywhere across China and many countries. Now, in order to, to, to really uh, overcome such challenge, we realized that the very first thing that we had to do was to be very conscious that we had to make sure our products are universal information accessible. And therefore, since the inceptions of every single one of our products, Tencent has promoted and enacted the principle of leaving no one behind and information accessibility. And I should like to take this opportunity to mention that we were extremely honoured uh, to have received the UNESCO Emil Jabal Al Ahmad Al Jabal Al Sabah Prize um, for digital empowerment of people with disability in December last year. And in addition, corporate responsibility also compels us to ensure algorithm equality in every one of our product development and to make our AI products available even to preserve and repair ancient cultural heritages, for example. Things like digitally repairing and restoring corroded artworks in the Mokau Caves, that's a UNESCO World Heritage Site where Tencent was very happy and privileged to be part of. Now, these are just some of the examples on how we utilize the potential and power of AI for the purpose of greater good. And here, I would like to share a video uh, that demonstrates how AI could potentially bring about further changes in people's lives. Do you realize how much our appearance changes with time? We're often unrecognizable to someone who hasn't seen us in 5, 10, or 20 years. This is particularly relevant in the case of a lost or abducted child, where the years change him or her into someone totally different than the face in the dated photos his family use in their desperate search. But QQ Alert is here to help. Equipped with facial recognition technology, based on convolutional neural networks and facial feature extraction, we have conducted billions of trials using a 10 million sample database. 
trained by deep learning analysis of the patterns of facial changes. Its AI system is able to automatically integrate the traces of time and match a child with the adult he or she grows into with a 99.8% accuracy. Now, changes are no longer challenges. No matter how long your child's been missing, simply upload his or her photos to our cloud. QQ Alert is able to process a huge database at a rate of 50 million photos per second, instantly presenting results that can bring the lost child home. So far, QQ Alert has facilitated 286 rescues, reuniting 176 families. Technology is changing the world and helping that which was lost to be found. Though we cannot stop time, with ever advancing technology, we can shorten the time it takes to bring the lost home. QQ Alert. Hope never dies. You know, talking about gratifications of a technology, um, what better way to feel gratified when you bring families back together? I think that would probably be one reason strong enough for all of us here to continue to believe in the righteous power of technology. Now, in addition to products, um, we also realize that we must find better ways to address the major pain points in the society that we belong. So one pressing concern has to do with China's supercharged rates of urbanization, which is the highest rate in the world. And statistics which shows that started from like the 1982, over 500 million of populations in China have actually left rural areas uh, moving into the cities. And that exerts tremendous pressure on urban infrastructures and resources while greatly implicating or complicating the task of uh, city governance. So in addition to that, um, inadequate medical and educational resources are challenges currently facing China. So when considering the country's sustainable development goals, focusing on these areas will help create a meaningful and real impact to people's well-being. Poverty and social inequality are just major obstacles facing all sorts of countries today. And China, just like many other countries in the world, uh, has major concerns regarding education and health care for especially the underprivileged as well. Now, in response to such important social issues, Tencent utilizes our technology to help ease the burden. And our AI strategy focuses heavily on these areas. Just like the city of Dubai, China and Tencent, we have placed a very, very huge emphasis on developing smart cities. And um, as of last year, Tencent has managed to connect the public services of more than 360 Chinese cities to the platforms of WeChat, whereby allowing the citizens access through what we now call a smart public services account. What about in the areas of education, in the areas of academics, where AI managed to place educational resources once only accessible to urban areas within the reach of all outlying uh, regions. And I think all of us here understand that uh, China is a huge piece of land, so uh, children from the first tier or second tier cities naturally will gain benefits into better faculty members, educational opportunities, and etc. It, it is um, not possible to migrate all students into the cities first or second tier, but AI can actually bring that to the households in the third and the fourth tier cities. So among users of a Tencent Penguin, for example, so you can see that 40% um, of students are actually benefiting from third tier and the fourth tier cities. Mind you, these cities are really remote and may not have the top-notch teaching faculties uh, like cities of Beijing and Shanghai. Now, 
AI is also bringing a new levels of inclusiveness to healthcare, like I'm sure what uh, some of our speakers yesterday would have shared with us. So in villages and grassroots areas where medical resources are relatively almost impossible to gain, so artificial intelligence can learn from the expertise of highly qualified doctors and pass on such you know, knowledge and experiences to rural uh, physicians. AI may also bring to villagers access to medical uh, resources that are on par with those found in uh, grade A hospitals in larger cities. Now, in fact, what we have discovered was that AI could also play the role of a great equalizer in the qualities of healthcare within China. It actually now allows doctors nationwide to improve the accuracy and efficiency of clinical diagnosis. Um, our real-time procedures for locating colorectal polyps is 96% accuracy and AI-assisted diagnosis of glandular cancer is 97.2%. So uh, one of the video that we're going to share later, it shows that AI enables early diagnosis and treatments, and therefore enhancing the qualities of life for Parkinson's sufferers throughout China. Zhi 医疗他们人工智能的团队呢合作，通过这种普通的摄像的设备所拍出来的动作，这样的视频其实是可以进行运动捕捉来做定量的很多分析。Thank you. AI for saving life. I've spoken about the challenges that we face on a product level now and also from a society and a country perspective. Moving beyond any country and focusing on the world at large, Tencent aspires to be a global citizen and creating greater good worldwide. This is something that we try to do today. So we believe that technology must be used to tackle the largest challenges facing the planet. So at Tencent, we're beginning to form a self-realization, and we refer to this as fuel, energy, food, and water. So these are the most fundamental and critical issues that humanity will face in the future. Take food, for example. Um, Feetech is one of the digital farming companies where uh, Tencent has invested. We have actually utilized this data to optimize the cultivations of agricultural products. And in December last year, in the autonomous uh, greenhouse challenges housed by Wuhaningen University, the team iGrow, 
which comprises of a Tencent AI lab and also a team of agricultural experts. They won the second place uh, with their submissions of AI Cucumber. And you might not think that this is something important, but this is a huge breakthrough because it, as it really paves the way to further research upon food production. As the UN has said in the past that in order for us to satisfy the food and nutrition needs of over 9 billion people by 2015, we need to really look at the way we improve our supply chain of food production. So ladies and gentlemen, I have shared today with you uh, Tencent's philosophy, if you like, and our practices of AI in China. And we believe that this is just the beginning of a new civilization that we call digital civilization. And in the past, if our industrialized civilization resulted from humans' masteries of machines, then this new digital civilization will open a new era in which mankind, the nature, and artificial intelligence will together enable a communities of a shared future. And that era of zero-sum games is ending, giving birth to a new era where cooperations and harmonious relationships stand foremost. You know what? Winning should never be at the expense of other people's losing. And making AI a reality requires more than a singular effort of one region or even one country, but the joint actions of the entirety of the entire human society. And policymakers around the world already are coming together in embracing the idea of a communities of a shared future. The tragedy of the common must be boldly confronted together, hit on, and there is no room for hesitation because there is simply no plan B for a planet B to begin with. So implementing such principles on a global scale is complicated, difficult, but requiring consistent efforts and readjustments from many people. Now, there must be some sort of a primary principle that remains the same. For example, a mindset of community with a shared future, an ecosystem governed by the many, an interactive multi-party engagement, especially among technology companies. Now, one final lesson that we have learned from our experience in China was simply this. The most effective way to develop an inclusive AI is actually via an eco open ecosystem governed by the many. China, we have actually created an open AI ecosystem that involves the various stakeholders, including the governments, technology companies, academia institutions, and of course, always putting the people, the user, at the centers of the universe. Now, all are actively playing a critical role in establishing a flourishing AI industry. The single-minded issue is always about technology for good. The power of the entire technology industry leveraging its technological resources for the good of human society. You know, in March this year, China's um, National People's Congress, the meetings of the country's top two largest, the top two level national policy bodies, it was held and our founder, Pony Ma, has actually made seven motions as a delegate and with the most important single-minded message calling for promoting technology ethics and following the path of technology for good. He noted that only when technology ethics plays its part as a regulator for technological innovation and for technological development can we, as human beings, can be sure of benefits for our society in the future. So, ladies and gentlemen, technology for good should never be just a slogan, uh, 
a mission statement, a code of conduct, but should become the driving force directing the conduct, the conduct of the entire industry. Well, that to an end, perhaps what we are trying to achieve today is not so much trying to be a hero um, in championing a change in the world. Maybe most importantly, we are trying to make sure that the new world that we are living in in the future doesn't change you and I. And I think that's where responsible AI comes in, and that's when ultimately technology for good will see the righteous fruits. And with that, I thank you so much. Thank you.